Oh man, we've been through so much, right? Uh, we really have, between Slicho, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and then Sukkot. Our, our lives have been so filled with holidays filled with holiness. So much going on, it's unbelievable. But it's gonna be unbelievable when it all comes to a stop. Right? It's true, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle when there's, when there's a pause and there's a break and our lives have been so full, what is that going to feel like? Yeah, we've been given so many different things and all of a sudden it's gonna to come to a stop. Well, actually the Torah has great advice for us. We're reading a very special Parsha in the Torah this week. We're actually going all the way back to Exodus. We're all the way at the end of the Torah, but we're gonna go all the way back to the book of Exodus and specifically at a moment where the Jewish people were just forgiven for worshiping the golden calf. Hmm. Moses has just shattered the first tablets and he just achieves forgiveness for the Jewish people. Well, she know what day that supposedly happened on. I don't. What day? Yom Kippur. Wow, that's a good day for forgiveness. That was a day, good day for forgiveness, right? But yet Moses, we find Moses still talking to God. What's Moses doing, right? Like, okay, you're forgiven. You can go now. Right, my dad would say, once you've made the sale, stop talking. Exactly, right? <laughs> you're, you're like done now. But Moses is seen staying. He's still staying around. And what does he ask God? He says, I won't, don't want to just be forgiven. God, I want you to lead us. Mm -hmm. I want you to, I want to experience your presence and I actually won't go on without you, but I don't want to just be forgiven, but I need you to be with us. Moses did a double ask. He did a double ask, a famous double ask. Rachel, you originated that, but maybe you're learning from Moses too. Exactly. Right? But so what did God ask then Moses do? How did God respond to Moses saying, I won't go on without you. The Jewish people won't go on without you. What did, how did God respond? Mm -hmm. Well, he asked Moses to go and take two tablets, mm -hmm. to carve out two tablets themselves, two empty tablets mm -hmm. that Moses, that God would eventually write on. Now, Moses was responsible for making and carving out those empty tablets. Right, because the first set of tablets God had actually carved out, right? Exactly, right? But the second set, Moses was responsible for actually going and getting those empty tablets. And you know what's interesting? Mm -hmm. Moses didn't know what would be written on those tablets. Right? We assume now we know it's, this, it's the Ten Commandments again. We know exactly what was going to be written on it. But from Moses' perspective, he had like no idea. Like God shattered the first tablets. How was he even to know that we were going to have the Torah any, anymore? Right? So there was this sense of surprise, sense of mystery. What is God going to do with these tablets that I'm bringing? And I think many of us have that in our own life, this mm -hmm. sense of empty tablets. We're going into holidays now. Which holidays are we going into? We're about to enter Hoshana Rava, then Shemini Atzeret, oh my God, more holidays. and Simchat Torah. And why are these holidays different, do you think, than Sukkot, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah? Well, Shemini Atzeret is, is really an interesting holiday because it's very confusing. There's this it's this holiday called Shemini Atzeret, the eighth day of gathering that the Torah mentions. But we don't actually have any mitzvot for this holiday. No we don't build a sukkah. We don't shake the lulav. We don't eat apples and honey. There you really don't. There's nothing to do. Right. It's like we have all of these things, and then all of a sudden we don't have anything. Just a bunch of empty space. And then. And then Simchat Torah. Another funny holiday. Again, really just the second day of Shemini at Sarat, But it's a day where we take joy in the Torah. But what's interesting is we're not actually told taught something from the Torah. We're not actually like supposed to be uh, guided towards something. We're just supposed to have joy in the very fact of the Torah itself, to dance with the Torah, to dance with the fact that we actually have guidance, that God gives us guidance, to have joy about that, that God actually gives us what we need. But again, still not knowing yet what we're going to need because we still don't even start reading the Torah yet for the year. We're going to actually start over reading the Torah after this. Exactly. Unbelievable. A lot of holidays about you guessed it, empty space, right? Creating, intentionally creating and crafting that empty space and to have the joy to under, and the surprise to let God dwell in those moments. Mm -hmm. But first, what does God ask of the human being? What does God ask of Moses? Moses modeled it for us. Mm -hmm. What did God ask of Moses? To create those blank tablets. Right, to carve out those blank, empty tablets. Sometimes that's the hardest thing we do, mm -hmm. is to actually like, create those empty space, especially since we've been so busy with so many things and building the sukkah and the lulav. What is it going to mean to have that empty space and to be able to craft that thoughtfully? Especially after the high holidays when we've thought about who we are and who we want to be in this world. 
And then we got really busy with Sukkot and we could distract ourselves a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna build a sukkah and I'm gonna shake the lulav. Right. And now it's finally the letdown where we say, okay, who do I really wanna be in the world when I'm not distracted and filled up with all of these external mitzvot and all I'm left with is myself and God. Who do I wanna be in the world? And the discomfort might lead you to say, I wanna fill it up, I wanna fill up the space. It's like when you meet someone for the first time, remember on our on our early dates, I wanted to fill up all of the empty space and, and in our conversations and I, I took all the empty space as like some negative sign. But Rachel, Rabbi Rachel actually said to me, she's like, it's okay if we have empty space, let's just be together, let's just dwell together, right? So, so too with our relationship with God and holiness and with each other, right? How can we just let that empty space just lie here and not feel the absolute need to fill it up immediately, mm -hmm. right? But to let that empty space be and to dwell together and let God fill up that space. What does that mean? Like how might how might you do that in your own life? How are you going to create that empty space? I want to say that that is the avodah, that is the personal work we need to be doing for this Shabbat, for Shemini Yetzirah, for Simchas Torah, right? Those come early, this Shabbat and early next week. We're going to really be doing this work of creating and, and facilitating, making way, having the faith to make that empty space in our life to be enable that space to be filled up eventually with God, but to have the faith that we actually don't know what that revelation is going to be. We don't know what God is going to want of us this year. So we thought... No, we know that we need post-it notes. We need reminders of all of these lessons that we that we learn. And so we've created for each of you, everyone who comes to Shabbat services and Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah services, two blank tablets that we will give to you with a magnet on the back. You can stick it on your fridge. So you remember sometimes to make that empty space, carve out that empty space for yourself to think about, okay, who do I actually want to be in this world? How are you going to be like Moses and sit with that empty space to carve out those tablets just as Moses did? How are you going to carve that out in your own life? Chag Sameach, everyone. Chag Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.